Please drop a clap. Sorry, I stopped. <laughs> you know what to do anyway, didn't you? You're, yeah. you're a pro. You're a pro. You're a podcast pro. A podcast pro. So I say hello, my name. You say whatever you want, podcast pro. Hello, Rachel from Leaps and Bounds Tutoring. Welcome to the Gerald Podcast with me, Simon Burridge, and the love of my life, Rachel Burridge. Aww. <laughs> 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 Forward a bit more. Forward a bit more. And then, then it will hover. It, there you are. See? It, it hover. That's hover. Yeah. I'm, I'm a master at it now. Oh, look, left the tape out. That's it. <laughs> Hello, oh, Rachel. Take, take back up, Rachel's back. I know. No? <laughs> uh, my, my backup, Rachel. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to see you. But this time we're here for you, Rachel. So tell me before before that falls off. <laughs> so I suppose she didn't actually get to choose last time, did she? No, no, she didn't. It fell off a of John Carlo, though, didn't it? I can't remember. I think it fell off the wall. It messes everyone's conversation up. Mm. So look at the state of it now. Let's put that. Right, right, you did put on new tape for me. I did. I've got new tape. Put a bit in there. Have a good thing. <laughs> you about should feel privileged. Can you give us time? Can you give us time or? The time? How long before it falls off? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I thought you meant what time was it? Um, I reckon. New tape as well. 15 minutes. Yeah. 35 seconds. Okay. Okay. All right then. From so, now? Yeah. From now. Well, we don't, look, we don't say what time it is because we like people to think we recorded this two seconds ago before they've watched it but <laughs> it's just gone the hour it doesn't matter what hour that is and two minutes so we're going to say 17 minutes on that hour 17, 17 minutes <laughs> Rachel's working it all out today's sponsors are Angelo's Interiors specialising in kitchens bedrooms and bathrooms go and visit their showroom today in Gillingham their web address is angelosinteriors.com Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. It's <laughs> all right, I can provide you with some maths lessons. <laughs> nice so, roll into <laughs> So you're Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Kerridge and Rachel Burridge, just a confuse thing. Yeah. Rachel Burridge, Rachel, Rachel Kerridge. Leaps and Bounds is your company. Yeah. yeah, so I run a primary school private tutoring company. Um, so I tutor children in maths and English from age four to, I've actually got one who is 13 as well, um, who I'm doing English with. Um, it's quite new. I've only been doing this since September 2023. Um, and at the moment I'm doing one-to-one -one tuition mm -hmm. um, in the children's homes and I do some online as well. Um, but I'm hoping to expand expand that to small groups as well. Nice. Right, so the ones you do online, yeah, um, can they be any? They can obviously be any distance, can they? And are you doing yeah. them online because of that? Um, the one that I'm doing online is a little bit of a distance. So I'm based in Dartford. Um, she is around here actually, around Rochester way, um, but she is a child who is um, home educated, right? Um, and she's quite shy. Um, so Mum felt that she would feel more confident with that sort of barrier, if you like, of mm. the. Um, the laptop i have to say i was quite nervous actually so this is the only one that i'm doing online currently um i was like oh i don't know how it's going to work i don't know if i'll be able to like engage with the child in yeah. the same way that i usually would but um i think obviously with covid and things like that uh kids online are quite tutoring yeah and online tutoring i think lots of the platforms that they use now are much better than they used to be so actually it's working out really well i still mm. feel like we're engaged and i can still put in interactive um, activities, um, even though it's over over the screen. Do you do like multiple kids in, on Zoom? Because they can put their hand up on Zoom now, can't yeah. they? Yeah. So this is did what. You, did you have you never done that before? Like, yeah. Through, yeah. through COVID. Yeah. I've put my hand up before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like it was a new thing. They can put their hand up now. I'm like, yeah, you yeah, could do that anyway. I don't think that was on Zoom originally. Then the <laughs> COVID kicked in, and oh, right, okay. you were allowed to put your hand up. <laughs> You know um, what I mean. I know what you mean. Um, no, I haven't done that yet. So uh, when I first started in September, I was just doing one-to-ones in children's homes. And um, almost all of the children that I tutor are neurodiverse. So they either have ADHD, ASD, or a combination of both. Um, some of the pupils also have 
got a couple who have dyslexia. Um, so when I first started, I think for many of those children, it was better to be in their home environment mm. um, and have the parent around. Mm. Um, I can't remember what the question was that you asked me. It was multiple kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I haven't done groups yet. I haven't even done groups online okay. yet, but that's sort of, that's the next thing that I would like to do. So having groups online um, and groups in person um, as well. Perfect. So, yeah, at the moment it's very much one-to-one. Um, I've got some siblings, actually. That's two-to-one. Um, and that's a phonics group. And that works out really well. Um, they've got a lovely little, got like a little cabin in their garden. And that's oh, like nice. my little classroom with them, which Perfect. is really nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, you said you were looking for some classroom space. Just use it. <laughs> yeah. So do you have to plan all these lessons out in advance? Sort of, because obviously you've got uh, different age ranges. So you must have to sort of um sort of structure it to their age right because you can't give like a four-year-old the same way that you're giving a 13 year old yeah there is quite a lot of planning involved actually and i think i probably could make it easier for myself you know like i could probably just do a lot more printing off worksheets mm. but um i try to even though most of the time i'm working on maths and english skills i always think it's really important for them to have that sort those soft skills mm. so we might start with a logic game or dominoes is a great one mm. um just having a little chat about their week things like that because I, I do an hour a lot of tutors only do 45 minutes right um and i think really an hour of structured maths or english probably would be too much mm. for, for a child um but getting in those soft skills i feel like you need the hour really mm. to sort of build up that rapport you need to have that that little bit of a conversation with them first, yeah. don't you? You yeah. need to have that. Not just Wean them in a little into, bit, so yeah. not straight into a lesson. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the planning, <clears throat> I would say, it does take up a lot of time. However, I've been a primary school teacher in the past. Um, and compared to that, it's, it's <laughs> still nothing. Um, but also, uh, because, because I personalise each session um, for each child, is actually really nice. Like, mm. I enjoy the process of planning for them. Um, and it does come quite, it's more of a fluid process than it did when I was teaching mm. in, a, in a primary school because I can be driving along and I think, oh, so-and-so, I bet he'd like to do such that. and such. So it's, it's a lot more fluid. Um, but I have sort of one day of the week where I'm purely planning, doing admin. Mm. Um, and then I probably do uh, a few hours every other weekend just to kind of top it up. Mm. Um, and there are some things that I, I can repeat um, with with um, certain ages, you know, yeah, yeah, certain yeah. children, um, especially as it, it, with this job, I feel it's more about stage than age. Mm. So there are things actually that you can do with a four year old that you might adapt for an older child to keep their interest. Um, but yeah, there is there is some re- re- mm. repeating that I can do. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy teaching children and sort of giving them the knowledge and thinking and seeing them progress and thinking, you didn't know that a few weeks ago, now you do. And it gives you a little bit of warm feeling. It does. It really does. (laughs) And obviously, you guys knew when I first started this, um, I didn't really have any expectations Mm. of, and I was thinking, oh, I don't want to run my own business. I just want a little thing, something on the side. Mm. And I think... I'm already at the point where I'm like, no, this is, I'm really loving this. I love the flexibility. I love how I can personalise to each child. Even the relationships that I've built up with the parents, mm. it's usually mums, um, you know, and the fact that, that they can sort of ask me mum things and we yeah. can have those like mum parent conversations. Mm. Um, you know, I get a lot out of it sometimes. So I walk away and think, oh, you know what, I, think I should try that at home. Or, mm. <laughs> you know, and you've um, got children as well. So you can obviously, possibly try it out on them yeah. and say how does this feel and you know from their school schooling how yeah. it works and everything like that as well so you yeah. could always adapt some of their stuff and their I really do feel had. valued mm. doing what I'm doing the families and the children that I've got I mean a lot of that's luck really isn't it they mm. found <laughs> they found me at the end of mm. the day but it just seems to work and click and they're all people I sound so sound so naff doesn't it but they are all people that I think I could hang out with him, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah, if there wasn't nice. a professional, um, you know, relationship there, <laughs> yeah. I'd think, oh, yeah, I'd go out. I can't have yeah. a drink with that mum, you know. <laughs> it doesn't well, go kid. too well. Uh, well okay, I've, just, I've done the maths for her. Um, can we go out on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down the pub. <laughs> yeah. That 
I've got a wine you've got sitting up there. Crack that open. <laughs> Can we be friends? <laughs> that is what I feel like. like I, know. I leave the houses and I think... Oh, I know what you're like. <laughs> yeah. That is something you'd ask. Their friends. Can, we, can we be friends? Because <laughs> you're sitting in the corner doing like all those yeah, games. Exactly. Going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I do, I do feel really valued. And again, it's amazing how these things kind of grow without you necessarily thinking about. So I'm a massive overthinker. Mm. You might know that. Really, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, in the past, I've, I've worked freelance and I think, uh, I've tried to do too much. I've gone at too fast a pace. I've had so many ideas about mm. things and then I can't sort of hone in. And I think actually sh- this time, strangely, I almost wasn't looking or trying. Mm. And then it's grown very organically. And now I can really take the reins and say, okay, do you know what? This this can go somewhere else. Mm. Like I can offer a lot more to these families. I can offer a lot more to these children. I could... You know, and obviously, it's, I'm trying to make a living. So, yeah. sort of growing a business that's going to support me and, and my children as well. Um, but I think that having that, maybe that slow start and building up my few sort of OGs, my original little crew. <laughs> um, and the feedback that I've got has been, you know, sometimes when I have those moments of self-doubt, I'm like, okay, you know, this mum sent this message. Yeah. You know, you don't, and obviously you do know in business, people don't praise you and tell you what a fantastic job you're doing. They don't go out of their way to send an email unless they really no, that's yeah, right. yeah, mean that's right. it and they yeah. really want to. Mm. Um, and it is nice because you know that's come from the heart. Yeah. And, like the testimonies that we get and you think, oh, they're actually really nice. Mm. Yeah. And, like, one well, of, we, yeah, go on. Go I was going to say, one of them that I had a few years ago, she she almost made me cry. She was sort yeah. of like, you were amazing, you were this, you were that. And then she said, I didn't even realise you were here. You just did so well. She said, every time I look at my photos, I cry. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. You know, you've made a real difference yeah. to somebody. And, that's, and just from something that I like doing, like yeah. my photos, I love doing the photography, has given this woman like all these memories and everything like that. And, it just, yeah. you know, and most nice. people would only do a review of their negative reviews. Yes. And yeah. That, and that's the sad that's the thing family. about our culture today, isn't it? If you've got something bad to say, everyone's all over everyone it. Everyone wants yeah. to say it. Yeah. And now if you, you don't tell everyone about yeah. it, yeah. And if you have something good to say, everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah, and you don't actually write a good post to say, <clears throat> actually, can I just say that you were actually really good or the hotel yeah. we said it was really good. That No one does that nowadays, mm. do they? I think and as well. Oh, go, on. go on. And I was just <laughs> going to say that I got one last week. You probably saw it because I put it on Facebook. Um, and the mum said something about... Um, don't follow you on Facebook. It being a yeah, nurture. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. A nurture. Thank you for creating a, a <clears throat> nurturing learning environment mm. for, for my children. And that as well, it's not just saying some nice words and Mm. complimentary words, which Mm. is lovely. I was like, you get me. Mm. Because Mm. that's exactly what I always strive to provide. Mm. So the fact that she said that, I was like, that's brilliant. Like you've, I've obviously, what I want to produce and give, I I have done it and it's got through to you. And this is, I think she'd had like two, the children had like two lessons with me or something. So yeah. And I I really didn't expect when I did the tuition, I thought, oh, one to one, you know, going to other people's houses, you yeah. know, driving around, all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like you would get judged, like if the mum was there and listening in on what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, I was just really think, nervous. Oh, I still get, do you know, I think before I go into any of them, I still get this little feeling in my tummy. Yeah, but that's you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get, I get that you. everywhere I go. To be honest, you get that going to Tesco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, Tesco's is one of the worst. All the lights and the buzzing of the fridges and people walking around and. So yeah. you take in the buzzing and the fridges and things like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like yeah, you got you got <laughs> you got some issues there. <laughs> Squeaky wheels of the trolleys, all of that. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's probably <laughs> for another podcast. Certainly. Um, is. We might. I can't, Aiden. <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying now. I can't remember what point I was getting to. But uh, you reviews. You talk about reviews and yes. how nice it was of that couple to send you it after two. Things. Oh yeah, I said about and now how she got you the yes, nurturing side you. of you. Yeah, um, yeah, that the whole um, thought of going place to place in people's houses, and like you say, like mm. the parents gonna stand there and like judge me. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I really thought, oh, it'll be something. You know, maybe I'll try it and see. Uh, I didn't realize how how much I would get from it mm. and how much I would enjoy it and how much I feel like, oh, I'm actually 
actually quite good at this. I can do this. <laughs> because I think it, it's helpful for the children as well. Because I know sometimes their classes are so big mm. and they've got 30 children that they're trying to compete with. And if one person doesn't get it and the rest do, and they try and say, you know, I don't get yeah. it. They're, they're not going to have the confidence to put their hand up and say, I really don't get this. Especially at sort of like six, seven, eight. Yeah. To say, oh, I, need, I need some more help. I need some more help. They'll just sit there and be like, oh, okay, everyone else gets it. I'll just sort of sit here and just not say anything. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah. and then your tutoring obviously really helps with that because you can, if they, if they don't get it, you can actually yeah. say to them, what don't you get? Let's go over it again mm. and again and again until it actually, not sinks in because that sounds rude, until they logically understand this yeah. is the process. Well, we've of got the, the time. This, yeah. And I think as well, um, I mean, obviously I'm not going to knock schools. I still still work in a school um, currently as well. Um, but it has been interesting. So I have been uh, tutoring children who are home educated. Mm. Um, as well as children that go to mainstream school and children that go to special schools. Um, so to see sort of the difference in the the culture maybe mm. and the attitudes that have come from obviously their environments and the children who have had school as part of their environment and children who haven't had school as part mm. of their environment, um, that's been really interesting. And I have I feel like I've learned as, like I've grown as a practitioner to, to kind of come in. And I've learned from the, the parents that are homeschooling as well um, because they're doing something that, I've not done apart from yeah. you know during COVID, but yeah. doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> we're forced Everyone to do it then. Was, we didn't yeah. choose to do that. Um, you know, I learned from them. Mm. I learned sort of different approaches. I think is probably the main the main thing. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I personally think any child is going to benefit from that one to one support. Mm. You know, I think Absolutely. any adult would. Um, and it is not something that can be provided in school when you've got thirty three, thirty four children in a class mm. sometimes. Um, so. The children that are in school, I like to think that what I'm doing supplements, um, yeah. you know, what they're already getting. Um, but a lot of it... We found it really helped Tilly, didn't we? Yeah. A little yeah. bit of extra education on focusing um, on one area. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the thing, like a lot of... So I always do an introductory session mm. um, and that's all about really getting to know the child, getting to the family, knowing what their, what their expectations are of the tutoring. Mm. And I've never had anyone say anything, you know, really crazy like, oh, my child is working at this level and I want them to be, you know, so that actually most of the time, most of the time the children themselves know what it is that they feel yeah. they're not strong in, mm. know what they want to develop. Mm. Um, Giving them so, the confidence to tell you and all. Yes. Mm. And this is the thing so many parents say to me is, oh, I think they're just not very confident. And that is the first three, four sessions. That's almost what I feel like I need to overcome mm. is confidence. And, you know, the amount of children that, um, I don't know why, but particularly boys, actually, they're almost scared to put the answer because they don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, is it this? I say, yeah. do you think it's that? Yeah. Yes, I think that's the answer. Well, why do you think that's the answer? Oh, because I did X, Y, and Z. Mm. And you're like, well, there you go. You know, that's the answer. Or, okay, yeah, you did think of X, Y, and Z, but did you think of yeah. this other thing? And then they're like, oh, okay. And they go back. Um. Do you, you know, think it has something to do with boys maybe being a bit more competitive maybe. and not wanting to get it wrong, like, yeah. like a score in a game type yeah. thing? I mean, I, I do get it with girls I'm as well. I'm not saying girls aren't competitive. Yeah, no, I know. But you know what I mean, yeah, boys are, Girls go out and they, they play in the, in the playgrounds. It's not always games, is it? It's just... It's, like, it's not always scoring points games, yeah. is what I mean. It's more like it's with all boys, imagination. boys, it's yeah. always scoring points, getting, getting something. So yeah, it in, could the, be. in their eyes... Getting that question wrong is like but, their um, own goal. They do tend to really worry. <clears throat> Again, I think there is a bit of pressure maybe as well in some ways where it is one-to-one. -one. Mm. I'm looking at everything they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> so I yeah. think I'm quite aware sometimes of saying, right, I'm going to leave you to do that and I'll sort of pretend I'm writing notes, you know, mm. just to give them mm. that little bit of space so yeah. they don't feel completely sort of... Well, that's horrible for everyone, though, isn't yeah. it? You've got someone, someone over your shoulder. Okay. Mm, okay. She <laughs> yeah. loves it. When she's editing and I'm doing it, she loves oh, it. <laughs> but then he yeah. hates it and he goes, can you just watch this? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm literally there with my pen and paper going. But I know what she's. Because you want to jump in, <laughs> yeah. don't you? Yeah. I know what she's going to pick holes in. <laughs> but well, that ain't right. I've already told you I'm not doing that bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> but now you say, watch the whole video. If you have to, write down notes and wait. Like, look at the time and tell me yeah. then afterwards. And I'm like, yeah, it's good. And you went, oh, right, Kate, tell me then. <laughs> and I'm like, but just this little tiny bit. Yeah. But, but look, it's just constructive. It is. It's, it's look from it's someone annoying. else's point of view. It's annoying view. from her. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I know even, what it is. That's the annoying thing about it is you've spotted something that I've spotted. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and so, um, that's the only thing. But going yeah. back to the tutoring, like Ted, I know when we do spellings with him, 
we've got into this habit now of he he works on praise big time. So yeah, you, you have to praise him up. Like even like the way he writes something or his his lettering and the way he sort of curls his letters and stuff. We're just saying, oh, that's amazing, Ken. He's like, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 He needs Scooby but, sat, snacks all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Just. But even last night when I was saying to him, like, okay, Sorry. I think we had like accident, we've got spellings, we had accident, believe, court and stuff like that. Mm. So weird ones that you couldn't really break down or chunk down as yeah. he calls them. And like he was writing one last night and I said to him, okay, so write court down. And he did it. And I went, you think that's right? And he went, Oh, that means it isn't then. I went, no, I'm asking you yeah. a question. Do you think it's right? And Confidence. He went, oh, I don't know. I'm just going to write it down. Do I write it down? And I, I could hear and see him like, God, is it right? Is it right? And you could, I could just see his little brain working yeah. over time. And I just went, if it's not right, we'll work yeah, on it That's again. why we're practicing. Yeah. That's what I always yeah. say. This is why we're practicing. Mm. If you knew it all, there'd be no point in me being here. Mm. Um, and then the other thing that really helps the confidence is I'll say, right, I'm going to ask you a question. And then you can test me. Mm. You know, obviously, there's a little bit of role play there because I usually know the answer. <laughs> 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 Love role play, do you, Have you ever you <laughs> This is a part of you we never know. I've been like, oh crap, I haven't. Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, not, <laughs> not accidentally, <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. Um, but that's another way of really seeing what they understand mm. because if they can think up a question about what you're looking at, that's actually quite a difficult skill yeah. um, because they're having to analyze. Um, or even if it's like a, so with spelling practice, for example, mm. um, playing hangman. I know it's not politically correct anymore. I don't do hangman. We, we build a man. Oh, is that what they're doing? Yeah. Oh. Well, no, that's what I feel because I do feel like it's a bit unkind, isn't it? Or hang person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're ruining our heritage is what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, that type of game, um, <laughs> they'll do a word for me. Man. And actually, if they've got a, a word, so... For example, the other day a child had pronunciation, which I think is a very difficult word. And why they would need to know that at that age. But anyway, um, they would get spellings given from school. Um, so the to, English sorry, the English language is mental anyway. Yeah, it is. It's, so it makes no sense. When it came to him having a go for me, mm. he was suddenly like, Oh, actually it's harder than you think to yeah. like work out the dashes. So you have to count every letter, yeah. write out every letter, and then every yeah. time I said, Oh, is there an A in it? He was going back to the word chicken. Yeah. But he had to check that word so many times. And that's why it was good for helping him to learn yeah. the word. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Um, and of course, I knew the word yeah. <laughs> quite quickly. But I had to like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> think well, there's a H. But okay. they love it. And he was like, oh, I I got it after three goes when you tested me. Yeah. But you took you took seven tries. Oh. Or something. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know. That's, <laughs> yeah. really cool. that's cool. But like last night with Ted, again, going back to his spellings. And he got the first time, because what they have to do is they have to, how, read them, copy them, Look, cover, and then right, check. cover it. Yeah. yeah. And so we did that one, and he got five wrong, but it was tiny little mistakes. Like mm. center, he put the E and the R around the wrong yeah. way. And like before, if I said to him, "You got five wrong, five out of ten and he was he would have had a meltdown. Oh, he just he? loses it. He would have had loses a meltdown. It. But last night I went. Oh, these are just tiny little mistakes yeah. that we can just fix and we can work on. I said, look, you know these words now. And he was like, yeah, okay. So I try and my hardest to break down, like, believe it was B, mm. so he knows how to spell B, L-I-E-V-E. I said that, and he went, that's a Pokemon one, so I'll remember that yeah. one. And that's how he remembers <laughs> it. So if you link it to something he's interested in, you've yeah, got his definitely. attention completely. We so. had amateur the other day, and this is a child who has English as an additional language. So oh, wow. quite often a lot of the words that he gets can't always read them but it often doesn't actually know what they mean yeah, right. yeah. and if you don't understand what a word means you're not going to be motivated to know how to spell no, it yeah. it makes it so much more difficult and um, but with that one he was like amateur footballer yeah <laughs> like he knew the meaning of that one and when he came to spell it he's obviously seen that word and yeah. used that word yeah. and there's some meaning behind yeah. the word and he could do it um but yeah the, the group spelling words that that schools have they're set by the um department for education mm. and i think one of the problems with it is they're not often anymore grouped with a particular sound yeah especially once they get beyond phonics. learning phonics yep. yeah and they get to key stage two so you might have oh this is all about silent letters mm. but there could be a silent w in one mm. silent yeah. h in another and i think that makes it a lot more difficult yes. if you've got a spelling pattern to follow yeah um and even if it's like topic words yeah you know, if they've got that theme, mm. I think that makes it easier. And I think it can be a lot harder when they just seem quite random. But yeah, like Ted's this week was something like um, accident, believe, 
then it was breathe both sorry breathe and breath mm. um and it, there was like I said there was no pattern to it that I thought okay well like it was before we've had sort of like you say the silent letters or the chers or the shons you know t-i-o-n yeah. at the end and you could say right this is all about this and there was one week I think it was when I was in hospital and you brought him down and we did it in hospital and you said Right, if you know the last four letters, yeah, just learn the rest of the words because you know every one now has mm. this in front of it. it yeah. At the end, so it's just, you it know turns, it. Into the brain... four, turns into a four letter word yeah. spelling yeah. test. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. The brain loves patterns. Mm. So they try and pick up, you know, when you're looking at something or you need to learn something, your brain will instantly try and make patterns. Mm. Mm. So if you can do that, as easily as possible, then mm. that's you know it's going to yeah. benefit them. So yeah. yeah. What's your view on um, joined up handwriting? Oh, I was just about to ask that question. Help me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it, for, it stresses me out how mm. they they make schools make too much of a mill of it. In my opinion, if you can understand it and it's reasonably yeah. late, that's good enough. Handwriting to me, handwriting or writing is a form of communication. So if you're able to communicate your message then and it's legible as you say like you can read it then what difference does it make? i know especially in this day and age when you're not when, even going to be writing much yeah actually typing skills is probably more yeah, important 100 percent. um however if your child is at a school and they're working on the, with the national curriculum that's in, um, it. That's in it yeah, yeah when it gets to year six um for them to get um above expected mm. they have to be able to sh- to prove and show that the child uses cursive writing mm. Um, to be perfectly honest, I've had children. <clears throat> I was I trained in Year Six, um, who chose not to join up their handwriting um, in their English books when mm. they were doing a long piece of writing. But if they had a handwriting book that you could take also with you, um, you, could you could show they yeah. they're, they're capable of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I've, yeah. I've said um, to teachers in the past. Mm. If my son or my daughter hands in a bit of writing and it's completely correct, mm. marks, you know, ticks every point that you want her to make, you want them to make, and then he he or she hands in the same bit of writing but it's not joined up, are you actually going to mark it differently mm. because it's not joined up? She yeah, said, sure. no. No. You know, Ted really really tries hard in English, bless him. And like his T's now look like A's because they've taught him to join from the T yeah. up, go down and across, and they look like A's. So I have yeah. to say to him sometimes, bit, it's a bit weird, please isn't it? do like, it properly. We worry about him losing... It's a, sort of worrying about him losing a skill in a way. Yeah. Handwriting can, is a skill yeah. yet. We stopped typewriting lessons. Yeah. Didn't we? And in theory, typewriting lessons probably now are oh, more important. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, because they I, used to teach them to do free, well, freehand. Uh, what's it called? Type. Touch typing. Yeah. I, I, my mum can do that. Like yeah. writing. Um, I did a calligraphy course when I was at school, but um, you know, I still do it now in cars and things like that. So I do still feel like there's an art to it. Mm. However, I think if that's causing a barrier to yeah, the child, break actually, the barrier. Yeah. yeah. Then why are we? Why are we doing it? Take yeah, take the barrier away. What upsets me is if that kid's got to do it in joined up handwriting and you can't understand that writing. Yet you can understand the writing (laughs) when he doesn't join it up. Let the kid just do the writing. Yeah, Yeah. it does demotivate them as well. Especially I know children who have got really curly, fancy writing because they felt that that's what they have to do. They can't read it back themselves. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, And when they get to secondary school, they don't care anyway. (laughs) And I've got mum friends that have said. In year six, I said, right, okay, do you want them to do this test in handwriting? I joined up handwriting? No, no, don't worry about it. And again, going back to your point about if they've got a handwriting book, that's fine. So why add extra stress to these little people's lives when, yes, it's on the curriculum, they can do it brilliantly, they can't, or they really struggle? In Mm, theory, they'd be better off with a calligraphy class. So just yeah. do the normal handwriting and then learn a calligraphy. Yeah. I can't even say it. Calligraphy. calligraphy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean yeah. though? I mean, that's that to me, calligraphy is actually it's a separate art. skill. Yeah. Because it's an art. often if you're doing something that's calligraphy based, you probably wouldn't be coming up with your own writing. You'd be doing a yeah. poem yeah. or yeah. a prayer or a title. Or, or, yeah. or, you know, be handy for us can be like uh, invites. Yeah, you know. exactly. You know, you're not ha- actually have to think about the content of your writing. Mm. Whereas if a child is doing you know, an extended writing piece, They there's so much for them to think about, mm. the content, the grammar, the spelling, um, which is, you know, there's very high expectations in primary school for those things now. Yeah. 
um yeah and, that, and, then, extra... and then they've got to then add and go yeah oh my god if I don't draw enough I'm going to get told off then they sort of mislead and go I need to make my story, I need to do this, I need to have all these mm. points in it, and I need to join out my handwriting. Look, if, if it means just taking that one little bit away so they can actually concentrate yeah. on the main body of work, do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our little yeah, <laughs> debate. That's how I feel about <laughs> yeah. handwriting too. Good. Glad to hear about that. Um, so you're a lady of many talents. Thank you. Aren't you? Are you starting to get nervous <laughs> now? Oh, God, I was like, Yay. Right. <laughs> I'm nervous. Listeners, for you. listeners, you have f- free guesses on what else Rachel can do. <laughs> and I can guarantee you won't get them. I do have some unusual uh, hobbies. I and thought it was going to say breasts or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was going <laughs> to. As soon as I'm trying to promote myself to parents and children, I was, I was going to leave my breasts out of it. Um. Look, just so you don't think I'm a perv, Rachel's a friend of ours, all right? So I can say things like that. Get away with it. Can I get away with it? I don't know if that proves you're not a perv. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that that that's very true. That's very true. But for comedy I feel reasons. Comfortable. I've used it for comedy I feel reasons. Okay. She's, you're happy to be touched. <laughs> tell me on the door where he touched it. <laughs> tell us not. No, just she, write a quick note to you on the yeah. note Help! <laughs> Sorry, no, you're off. a close friend, you know. You know yeah, I know it's um, all in jest. But, um, so, so that means she's got hobbies that we can also take the piss out of as well. <laughs> which you is good. take the piss? No. no. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay, well, I'll start with the newest hobby that I have. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, we've, we've literally just been informed of this. Oh, we've yeah. only just found out just this one. Yeah. Yeah. This is a classic. So we might have some um, questions. It's very oh. traditional, I'll give her that. Yeah, I have, I have got a background in dance, so... Pre, prior to training to be a primary school teacher, I was a dance teacher um, in primary and secondary schools. Um, and I did dancing as, you know, a child, ballet, tap, modern jazz, all of that stuff. Um, all that jazz. Y- yes, very much so. Um, and I also taught country dance for a little while. Love country. Which I was kind of um, not roped into, mm. but, you know, the school needed it. So I was like, yeah, I'll step up. I've got dance background. Um, but I have been to two gothic morris dance classes yeah i am now a morris dancer gothic but all in black or black and white do yeah. they all just look depressed and dance? uh well in practice we don't dress up we just wear something you can't ask that do you just don't look depressed <laughs> they've got um, oh, like they have like white white and black a little bit like kiss kind of style makeup right and yeah form. am i allowed to say the name of them can well I kiss promote them? No. of course you can say you can say the, whatever you want the name. Yeah. okay so it's they're called the Screaming Banshees, and they're based in Dartford. Screaming Banshees, no, yeah. Because cool I've heard of that before. Screaming Banshees—that word's it's from used a lot, else, isn't it? Is there a band, maybe? Yeah, or yeah, Screaming Banshees. Yeah. I think so. But I like—I like that it's, it's sort of traditional. There's some history there, but it's got a twist. I'll tell you what, you'll be performing in Rochester High Street. Yes, yeah, yeah, we will. Are you? Yes, I think. So. Well, if I get good enough oh, yeah. to do that, honestly. Yeah. They do. They yeah. do like, what, just, uh, on Kings, like um, Dickens, Dickens Day. Um, I don't on like, the. I don't think they're doing the Dickens this year, but they are doing something in Rochester. I know that for sure because they were asking me if I wanted to do it. Because we will be there. If you're there, just oh, we are going to be run, there. Run. I can't wait. <laughs> I want don't a really worry. lovely costume. Do you hit, do you hit sticks and stuff? Yeah, it's all. It's pretty much all sticks. I suppose they use knives like, as a gothic <laughs> <laughs> syringes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just sticks. And I didn't know that you had to have like a special stick. Oh yeah, it's got to be a long like straight a one. It's got to be like a. I, I don't really. The, actually, it's this probably is bad, isn't it? It's probably like an instrument. Name, but... Like it's got a probably good twang to it. Yeah, you know? it's, it's, they've got to be certain. What you can't just turn up with any old stick, basically. Right. <laughs> From the woods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a rolling pin. But my own this time. <laughs> um, rolling pin. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's great fun. Um, people, good mixture of of different people. So how did you find these people? What did you uh, What did you search? Facebook. It just popped up. You know, I'm one of those local, like, you know. Come join us. Yeah. That's pages. what pop-ups are for. People like her. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. I, oh, this I'm looks like me. <laughs> interested in that because I am a bell ringer. Yay, that's so the one. Ring the bell ringing. Church bells, um, which Simon just thinks is I think it's brilliant. Fascinating. I love it. Um, love a good bell So I've been ringer. doing that for about three, four years. Probably, but we had COVID that interrupted, and I was a little bit like in and then out and then in and out. Yeah, mm. I didn't, I didn't fully commit straight away. Um, so with with all these things, you go on your own, or you have people that you 
go the bell ringing would be a bit hard by yourself. Yeah, I know. As in, like, you don't go with someone. You you go there and yeah. then make friends. I see what she's yeah. talking about. She's like, you didn't ring a mate up and go, will you Shall come with me come to this the yeah. Morris dancing? No, I, I haven't. Although I do think I probably have got a few friends and probably trying to my side. That's the weird thing about you. You, you would right? quite. You go into yeah, Tesco's, amazing. you talk about the, the, uh, the yeah, fridges exactly. buzzing, everything <laughs> going on at the shopping trolleys, then you rock up. By yourself I know. to a the cars. weirdest Morris dancing group I've ever heard of. <laughs> do you know what? I, do you know what though? I think sometimes going to something. Oh, I feel like I feel like I'm, un, I'm unearthing something. Actually, maybe I'm yeah. sharing. I'm going to overshare. You're going to cry. No, I won't oh, cry. Okay. Um, yeah, you <laughs> just make better figures. Go on. I'm just thinking. <laughs> just um, <laughs> yeah. I think in some ways going to something that I know is going to be a bit unusual. I find easier because there's less expectation. Okay. And also you tend to find <laughs> anyone else that's going there, they're going to be open-minded people that are maybe mm. a little bit out there themselves. Mm. So doing something like that, I would find so much more comfortable than going into like somewhere mainstream, like a gym or... Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does make yeah. sense because when I think of other things you do, you do a bit of yoga on the beach and stuff. Didn't you? What is it you yeah, do? Yeah, summer yeah, solstice yoga type yoga, yeah. yoga as well. Um, gong bath, oh, a bit, a bit of a hippie actually, gothic yeah, hippie, bell ringing person. Yeah. Yeah. And you do flower arranging, also do things with like church candles or something, you arrange them, don't you? Or something. Yeah. So actually, can I, sh- I should shout out the church, shouldn't I? Okay, you should, yeah. <laughs> so um, it's St. John the Evangelist in Sidcup. It's a very inclusive church. They do lots of outreach things um, for the community. So you don't have to be Christian to go. It's just for everybody. And they've toddler group and things like that. Um, so I do the bell ring in there at St. John's uh, Bell Ring in Group. We which filmed is led there by. I oh, filmed yeah. there before. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is led by Debbie Runting. Um, and I also do the flower arranging there as well. So I've got one of my best friends um, called Olive, Olive Mercer. Hello, Olive. Um, she is the flower arranging coordinator and nice. she sort of taught me, taught me how to do the church flowers as well. Is that something you thought about going into as a business? I, I imagine that's hard. Flower, flower mm. I don't imagine it's hard. It's hard. I, I, it is. Especially for a wedding day. I'm, and you can't yeah. control what those flowers yeah. are going to be. Yeah. Like. I, I mean, I'm very much an amateur. I, I, I like it as a hobby, but no, it's not something that, I would want to do professionally. Mm, like, okay. I think I'd almost kill it a little bit, mm, you know. Mm. Well, that's not the one. No, you can't do that with flowers. flowers. <laughs> um, I, I think there would, like you said, there would be so much pressure. There's too much pressure. Yeah. And making them perfect. And I then you would never mm. be happy with them. But mm. yet you still give them over to someone. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, God, that would stress me out big time. Um, mm. And also I'm too busy with the tutoring. I've got time. And all these <laughs> unusual hobbies that I have. Mm, it's true. So with, with bell ringing, do you have to be upper bodily Bit, if that makes sense. Um, upper, upper body, I don't know. Do you have to have upper body strength? Yeah. Um, upper bodily fit. Not as, <laughs> you know what? Do you have to have good upper body strength? As much I feel as another cup think. coming on. <laughs> I don't. I don't have very good upper body strength, to be honest. Um, once you, once you pull the bell off, um, <laughs> actually, because they're quite heavy. That they have some momentum, so it's right. more about control okay. um, and rhythm than strength. Yeah. Um, we have found, or I've found people who, if you've got maybe like mobility issues in your shoulders, I would say that would be a barrier to yeah. you. My doing shoulder's it. killing me at the moment. Actually, so um, glad I'm not going bell ringing. But uh, <laughs> oh. can you hear me bell ring? Yeah. I'm saying you've got to be overtly strong. I mean, we've had people. We've had 11 year olds being. We've had. We've got an eighty-nine-year-old wow. uh, guest visitor. That, that I have being... a genuine question. Mm. It has a little bit of comedy. Um, all these questions are genuine. No, none, of them. <laughs> none of them at all have been genuine so far. Um, you see comedies with bell ringing, yes. and what do you see? You see them grab the rope. Yeah, is that possible? It's um, got to be a very heavy bell to take you up, yeah. isn't it? It would have to be uh, maybe yeah. a child, maybe. Yeah, yeah it could bell. happen, but it's, it it would be very unlikely mm. because actually your natural instinct would you just let go, let of, go it, of it, yeah. And then the bell would probably swing, it break the stay, that wouldn't be good. But yeah, you wouldn't be. No, the and you don't go up and down either. <clears throat> you wouldn't be. Going, you know, like they show them like going up and down, up and down. Oh, that's impossible. Yeah, that they just come happen. down and stop. Yeah, exactly. Um, because I know the bell was obviously. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Um, but when when you met Rachel's mum a few months ago, mm. or your dad, he immediately knew what the term was for bell ringing. 
Oh, the, the, oh, the name for a bell ringer. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the name oh, of it? Oh, no. And you oh, don't no. know it. Campanology. Who? Campanology. Campanology. Now, yeah. you'd think that's got something to do with a VW camper, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, snug dubs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a campanology. Yeah. So do you I know would where never that, have said. Where does that, that arrive, from, arrive from, that name? Do you know any derived, idea? Derived. Yeah, derived. Um, derived. Where did it arrive? <laughs> like, through the door. I feel like you're testing my English really. I don't know. I will look it up. All right, then, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, that's really unusual of me to have not looked it up already. You know what a word yeah. nerd I am. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know the origins of so it. So in your, in your bell ringing mm. group, how many people are allowed to ring at one time? So we've sense. got six bells. So, so six people. <laughs> um, but we, I mean, you can get towers of 12 bells in. Um, we usually have more than six people in a practice night. Uh, well, and on a Sunday, we basically will ring and then we will... Um, Stop and then swap over, and someone else mm. will do like a set if you like. Yeah. And can do you, you have competition with... nights? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> and it hit the chicken as well. It actually, I, think I heard it hit the chicken. The first Did one. the chicken go off? Yeah. You are the first. Really? To have the chicken go <laughs> off. <laughs> chickens love me, don't they? Oh, oh god! I love chicken. <laughs> Here we go. Here we oh, go. Oh, I did. Need it works, doesn't it? It's good, isn't it? I nearly went myself. <laughs> <laughs> and was it? Oh no, you're a little bit over. You're a little bit over that one. Oh. oh, you're well over. What did you say? I can't even remember. 15, 15. Oh, you're way over. Yeah. Fine. That's good, though. Ooh. Oh, I see it. So it didn't make me jump. It usually makes me jump. Really but I called it jump. in the corner of my eye. I just sort of looked over. Um, what was we talking about? I have no Competition. Idea. Bell ringing competitions. Yeah. And does it get like really rowdy? I imagine they start fighting <laughs> each other. They get very competitive. Does it? Yeah. Does well, it I've not done anything like that. So yet. do they go to different church bells and do these competitions? Yeah. yeah. And then you have things called um, peels or like quarter peels. So that's um, like a method. So um, it depends on how many bells you've got. But in our church, it would take usually about between 45 and 47 minutes to ring. Uh, a complete order. rotation. Yeah, yeah you, you have to have. Oh, Debbie's going to kill me. I think <laughs> a quarter peel is 1,500 changes. So that means me doing like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. And then, then they swap places. Oh, so yes. you have to do that. Um, and you can't stop. So oh, if someone goes right. wrong or stops, then you don't you don't get the quarter pill. You don't oh, score it if that, you like. All your mates would be able to do are house clearances, I think, wouldn't they? With their <laughs> upper body. And then, like, obviously, uh, a full peel. Sometimes, depending on the um, the bells that they have, they can take sort of five or six hours. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. and you you can't That's stop, exhausting. sneeze, go to the toilet. And then there's a, a rock version, isn't there? The John Peel, isn't it called? John. Don't worry, all lost on you too. <laughs> You're welcome, viewers. Oh, maybe he's um, it's, it's an old it's something. Thing. I was going to say it must be of his generation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. <laughs> not only are your names about three letters out from each other, you're pretty much the same age as well, aren't you? Yeah, you she's a little bit. Me. She's a bit older than me. She does yeah. look a bit older than all, doesn't she, Ray? <laughs> she doesn't though. That's the oh, don't you start. At all. <laughs> You've never had anyone walk off the podcast yet. So I would be very careful because oh, one of your hosts away. Yeah. <laughs> You've got your back up, right? So she'd just fill in and ask herself in. questions. Yeah. <laughs> I just swapped chairs. Yeah. And I could oh, put right, my glasses sorry. on. Go pop with that Superman. What, what do you think of this? Um, you Rachel Burridge now. <laughs> might be Rachel Kerridge and take them off. <laughs> oh, dear. What else can we take Mickey out of you over? Take the no. out of I like I like bell ringing because mm. we see we meet a lot of bell ringers in the job we're doing. It's just funny that um, it is you unusual. do it because you, 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 it's, the, it's not what you do. It's the it's the fact that you do all of them. Yeah, <laughs> I've got pet stick insects as well. That's quite unusual, isn't it? How long have you had them for? Oh, I've known that four or five years. Yeah. I've never seen your stick insects. That's not a euphemism either. <laughs> I have to bring them out. I have I have, met, I have met stick insects before. We used to have them at school. <laughs> I've Hello. <been. laughs> Shake hands, I think Ted would love them. I'll have to bring them around. Ted shouldn't. is obsessed with insects. I love them. I We've love got the way. Babies at the moment. He oh, loves yes, nature. I want to use. I also, I wanted to. Um, I want to do a bit more uh, macro lens work. Okay. And they'd they'd be <gasps> ideal for that. I, ideal. Oh, I ideal. <laughs> My stick insects can be models. Yes. <laughs> I want to. I just want to. I just don't do much. Yeah. I'd like to do a bit. Yeah. Of macro okay. Lens that's stuff. that. We can. We can arrange that. I've got a stick insect day. Yeah. So um, stick these, insect these... day sorted. <laughs> so these subtle shoots that people arrange, you're like, well, you can advertise your work, you're going to do someone's stick insects. Honestly, that'd be good. Yeah, so if you're quite well lit and all that, it's 
It's glass thing, is it? In yeah, it's glass. But I could get them out as well on the on a table. The sticking sex, like. yeah. Yes, the sticking sex. <laughs> um, oh, I know what I wanted to ask, actually. Ask your <laughs> listeners, your viewers. Go on, then. Um, so, as I was saying, I want to expand to doing small groups mm -hmm. um, tuition, probably from like September. And I need a, a space, a workspace to work from, like a little classroom kind mm -hmm. of space. It doesn't need to be that big. Um, I mean, talk Black shiny table, <laughs> white walls. <laughs> this would be perfect. Um, so I'm based in Dartford. So, you Could know, within sort of 20 way. minutes, mm. I, would, I would travel to. Oh, this is 21 minutes um, away. Oh, such a shame. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone knows of any spaces going, then that would be, that'd be great. Okay. Very good. So how can people find you or your tuition? She's here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I actually don't have a website at the moment, um, purely because I've not needed it. It's been all at the moment. It's been very much word of mouth um, and social media. We've with some things, yeah, with some know. things, yeah. you, don't need uh, you don't really need yeah. too much. Social um, media is your website these yeah. days. Yeah, once yeah. once I start explaining, I think I would I would like a website because okay, I have lots of other ideas as well, like about doing some parent workshops, you know, like how they can support their children at home nice. with their homework and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's all you know, somewhere in the future. Mm. That's your um, five-year plan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, on Facebook, you can find me. Um, it's called Leaps and Bounds Tutoring Services. So I'm on Facebook there. You can email me at rachel underscore freelance teaching at gmail.com as well. Perfect. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? You called it Leaps and Bounds because you were thinking about doing a bit of dance with that as well, weren't you? Yeah. So again, you know, I was saying in the past when I've done freelance stuff, sometimes I just get so many ideas. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, so because I used to be a dance teacher, I do still do some dance teaching, just, just ad hoc, usually just cover work for people when I have time, which isn't often. Um, and I thought, oh, if I go with Leaps and Bounds, um, obviously you've got like the saying coming on Leaps and Bounds. Um, but also I could link it back to the dance yeah. and maybe start up some dancing. Mm. That's not something I'm going to do at the moment okay. because the maths and the English has really taken off and mm. I want to really... Um, Concentrate, focus. Oh, yeah, I want to focus on that. Mm. Um, Just come around hours and dance, can't you? Yeah, just dance in my bedroom. <laughs> oh, let's, let's, my wait, you can dance now if you want. <laughs> stand stand, stand up and dance. dance <laughs> Should we dance our way out of this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's do that. Do you want to dance your way out of this podcast? I want no, to do a little want you to dance how to... as if like it's a finale, yeah. Go on then. Now. It's done. Well, unless you want to talk about anything else, anything else you want to oh, cover. I think I'm done. I haven't got I haven't got a sports bra on. I'll do my best. Oh, I thought you wanted to talk about that. Oh, about. Oh, <laughs> no, I mean from the dance floor. <laughs> not got my dance shoes, not got my sports bra. Yeah, no, I'll do a bit of dancing. Yeah, so do you want to Talk about dancing. <laughs> what are you looking at me? I don't know. Do you want to like? Do you want to find? What am I trying to say? We never really talked about how you got to being a being a teacher. Well, how have you got to this position um, in your life? What did you want to be originally? A dancer? Yeah, and then I think really quite early on, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, I've always liked that's teaching. that sorted then. Yeah, um, I, didn't, Bye, everyone. I didn't. I didn't actually go to university till I was twenty eight. Right. Um. So I did some work as a teaching assistant. Um and a learning mentor and sort of support roles um, alongside the dancing that she always sort of did on the side. And then I did a primary education degree, um, which people always say, like, primary education degree, what do you do? Just like learn about schools. Um, but actually, definitely, you know, what I'm doing now um, really comes into play because a lot of that was child development, child psychology, um, and the theories of learning, you know, mm. how we actually learn, how our brains um, can recall and retain information um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was a two-year accelerated degree, woo -woo, and I got first. Did you well done? <laughs> While working and having two young children, well, I um, and going. then yeah, and that was at the University of Greenwich, which is amazing. I really recommend it to anybody wanting to do a degree, especially if it's like later on in life. I felt they're really supportive of like mature students. Um, and then I did the um, initial teacher training within a school setting. Mm. Um, and and yeah, and it's actually still the school that I'm working at now. All right. But now I'm doing more of a support role so that I can build up the tutoring. Mm. Um, you also so do a bit of um, hosting, don't you? Like a backup hosting, I hear. Oh yeah, podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I'm available <laughs> podcasts. Um, yeah, I think I just get. I don't know. I just get right into I'm like, like, oh, oh, what do we need? We need something clearing out. 
give your HR call. She'll come and do it for us. But it's so, because so, I'm not a confident person. You're I'm not, not a sociable person. Oh, no, we've been here though. You're not confident on normal life things yeah, like going shopping. But I can do weird but stuff. But then you can be a gothic. <laughs> Morris there could be a gothic ball. Morris dancing bell dancing ringing. In the streets. <laughs> Church yeah. flower With candle ranger. Yeah. <laughs> Church um, candle flower ranger. But also as well, I feel it, it's, it does make a difference to me when I'm around supportive people. Uh, are we supportive? No, uh, should we end in the cuddle, like a group cuddle? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's nice because it's a topic of conversation that a lot of people don't have. Because people are going to say, yeah, go to the gym or do this. Now, when you come in and say, "Oh, a bell ring," people are like, "Wow, that's really interesting." Yeah. Tell me more. Tell me more. So, I mean, it's a good conversation start. Yeah, it is. it is. People are usually interested when I tell yeah. them about it. It is. They're, oh, definitely. It, um, caught our attention. <laughs> 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 it's like, tell me more about this because you do imagine it being a older person's anything church yeah. related these days. Yeah, anything church related. You just think it's like an older, you know, po- yeah. older over 50 think, type thing. As well. Like, I, I'm definitely not a traditionalist in any way, shape or form. Um, but there are certain things that I think are nice to hold on to. You know, a little mm. bit like we said about the calligraphy and, you know, holding yeah. on to some of those those things. And I think that's why I like the bell ringing and the Morris dancing. Mm. Um, although, especially the, the gothic Morris dancing has like, got that modern twist to it. Um, but with the bell ringing, actually, we've got quite a few youngsters. But yeah, generally speaking, it is older people. Mm. Once they are no longer here, that's it. Carry, sort yeah. of finished. Again, with flower arranging oh. as well. Like, it's, it's I'm the we've youngest lots, lots person in church who does the flower arranging. Mm. The other ladies are are much older. And you mm. just think, oh, it'd be really sad if we got to a place where we don't have them anymore. Yeah. You know? It happens with a lot of things, but then it comes back like t- yeah, tilly's into we do have to move crocheting on. and stuff like that. Yeah, now, that's it? true. Yeah, it goes. Harry Styles knits and crochets, doesn't he? Does he? Yeah, he's brought it back into fashion. And the diver, what's the diver? Oh, Tom name? Daly. Yeah. Tom Daly. Yeah, he's been oh, he's right. been sitting there at like the Olympics before, not actually mm. competing, but watching the other contestants with his knitting needles and stuff. Really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this. you're right. That is nice. They do come back around. Does come back? It comes back when you least expect, least expect it. it. <laughs> Where you got me out of that. that. I, I don't know where I was going with it. I don't know where you, you got me right out of that. <laughs> anyway, it's always a pleasure to have you, Rach. Thank and, you. And we'll have you around again. It didn't sound right. It didn't make it like that. <laughs> On the podcast, I think. <laughs> I'm just a pleasure to have around all the time for anything. You well, are. That's debatable. But, uh, you're a ray of sunshine. You're lovely. Yeah. And you help us out when we need you too. So thank you. You're welcome. Hug. <laughs> Go. This uh, is the first podcast we've ended in the home. I did a podcast. You're the first with the squeaking thing. I know. You're the first ended with that. the podcast what? hug. There we go. Oh, we and we started hug with hugs. We did we start did. with hugs. We did start Not a group hug, but yeah. I may have given Kelly a kiss or something. No, you felt her up. Oh, well, I almost said you felt her up. <laughs> that sounds wrong, <laughs> doesn't it? This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, camper van hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. That's snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road, Strood. Try the Viking Challenge 